The city of Vidisha was on the trade route which connected the plains of the Ganga to the western coast. It was also a great marketplace at the centre of the vast and fertile plains of central India. At Sanchi, on a low hill close to Vidisha, are the finest surviving early Buddhist stupas. Halfway up the hill is a stupa which contains the remains of prominent Buddhist teachers of the Maurya period. The Vedika made around the stupa dates to around 100 BC. The Vedika has medallions and half medallions with reliefs. Corner pillars at the entrances are fully carved. The deity of prosperity and abundance, Lakshmi, is here being lustrated by elephants who pour water over her. The relief is shallow and the style is similar to that of Bharhut. The greatest surviving Buddhist stupa of the BC period is on top of the hill at Sanchi. It is likely that it would have enshrined the relics of the Buddha. The stupa was originally made in the 3rd century BC. By the end of the 1st century BC, the Satavahanas, kings of the Deccan region, extended their rule to central India. They worshipped Brahmanical deities. However, major stone renovations here during their time made this stupa one of the most significant of all Buddhist monuments. Four gloriously carved stone toranas, 34 feet high, were made. They were completed in the first century AD. The traditions of art established in the time of the Shungas achieved greater sophistication in these magnificent toranas. Six hundred and thirty-one inscriptions on the toranas tell us that the carvings were the donations of the people of Vidisha. The art was created for gardeners, merchants, bankers, fishermen, housewives, householders, nuns and monks. Almost half the donations were from women. The massive Vedikas are plain and without carvings. The sculpted Toranas have two upright pillars, which support three horizontal bars or architraves. The West Gateway has dwarves who support the finely carved bars of the Torana. The dwarves, or gunners, are made with rolls of fat and vast bellies which bulge over their dhotis. They have individualized facial expressions. Gunners continue as a favorite theme of the Indian artist in the centuries to come. They deepen the sense of the reality presented in art, where the humorous and the sublime coexist, reminding us that everything has its place in existence. The veneration of nature's fertility and abundance, as seen at Bharhuth, continues here. Twenty-four auspicious women are made as bracket figures on the gateways. On the east torana is a beautifully made yakshi who holds the branch of a mango tree above her. The notion of the creative vitality of nature and its fruitfulness is convincingly portrayed here. 